often at the first of the week, I give you an assignment for this particular week. Well, this week is to be lived without any pity party, not to dwell in our own pity. It has been said a complete holiday from self-pity is necessary to success. The only way to rise above your former difficulties is to rise above them first in mind and then in action with the actions following those higher thoughts. It says in Psalms 30, verse 5, the nights of crying your eyes out give way to days of laughter. Isn't that a beautiful Bible quote? It is a reassuring Bible quote, telling you of what God will do when God comes in and through you. Self-pity is not only an unproductive way to think. It is often an affront to God. Because when we're in pity, we're forgetting about our blessings from God. We're forgetting about the blessings that can come from God. We're living our days crying our eyes out in thought. And uh, when we go to God, that will turn to laughter and smile and joy and happiness. And that is the way that it is supposed to be for you. God's word promises that God's children can receive peace and comfort and love and eternal life. And eternal life means more than what you might have been taught. It means eternal life in this day. Not to be walking through it, sleepwalking, not to be half awake or half asleep. It is to be totally alive, totally awake, totally aware. That is eternal life. It is living each moment of your life to the fullest, not halfway or not a fraction of what it could be. These gifts in your life are an outpouring from God, a manifestation of God's grace. And with these rich blessings, how can you possibly feel sorry for yourself? Now, self-pity and peace can't coexist. Let me kick up the teaching a little bit here, just for a minute. The mind cannot go two ways at once. If you're worrying, if you have fear, what you need is you need to have opposite thought. You need to turn it around, and then the mind goes in that way. Now, it's easy said. It's sometimes hard to do, but once the turn is made, the mind will stay locked on that turn. There's a locomotive thought in you that determines the direction. You determine the direction, and you decide on the thought to be God-centered the thought to be God-blessed, the thought to be realizing in thanksgiving and gratitude all that God has done for you in the past and will do in the future. So self-pity and peace cannot coexist in the same mind. Bitterness and joy cannot coexist in the same soul. And thanksgiving and despair are mutually opposites. So if you're allowing the thoughts of pain and the thoughts of worry to dominate your life, I want you to work on training yourself to think less about your troubles and more about God's blessing. Hasn't God given you enough blessings to occupy your thoughts all this day, every day, from now on? Of course God has. So focus your mind on God and skip the pity party. You have much better things to do with your eternal life.